of We The Gamer Cast. This publishes on iTunes, Google Play, and Mother Love and YouTube! Every single Monday. That's enough of that. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for rating us on iTunes. Thumbs up. I'm a little excited for those of you who are new. I'm not normally home alone. Normally, this only gets done during baby nap time. But now it's Shawnee yelling time. I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for being here. 140. I don't often get like overly excited over the, the number of this show. It seems like it just keeps going. But 140 feels good. And this is a good episode, guys. This is, you know, PSVG continues to totally take over this, this show. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Because if you're new, here's the deal. Every week I have sweet hangs with a stranger from the internet. And if you want to be on the show, it's easy. Just tweet at me, at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery Capri, like the pants, the show's on, on video, because of all of our patrons at patreon.com slash make us better, making this show better, and a slew of others, we'll get to that in a second, so I want to thank our amazing executive producers, like our platinum executive producer, Mr. Corey Hicks, our gold executive producer, Sheldon Benedict, and Mr. Moody, and all of our gentlemen executive producers, Dude427, Martini Jean, Aaron Doherty, David Ray, Jesse Johnson, wait, Jesse Armstrong. Jesse, I've seen a couple pictures of you lately, man. Looking good. That hair, haircut is on point. James Johnson, Dr. Doom, and Nick Militia. Guys, I, I changed up the order, so I'm a little out of, a little out of sorts here. This is going to be a great show. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm, I'm pumped to be recording this. Also, well, you know what? I'm going to get that out in a second. I was going to... You no, know, let's talk about it now. Right after this, I, I'm a little excited, guys. Right after this, the reason I'm home alone, by the way, is I was going to go to my parents' house for dinner. Um, Chelsea and the baby and I were going to go join the Capri clan and, and everybody. There's a whole shindig happening right now. But um, right after I set up plans to go do that, I got a, I got a DM from my old friend Chris Johnson from Player One Podcast. And he said, we're down a man tonight. Would you like to guess on the show? And I I sort of just like looked at my phone. I think I did like six takes. Like, no. He doesn't ask for guests on his show. So I uh, I before <laughs> before I responded, I went back to the text of my parents and said, Okay, change of plans. I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm totally bailing on family dinner to be on Player One Podcast with Chris Johnson and all that crew. My God, this is amazing. So thank you to everybody for I feel like this is this is for all of us so if you guys haven't already um check out that episode with CJ on episode 122 you get to know him a little bit more and then check me out on player one podcast I can't believe that's a thing that's crazy ah this is awesome good day and it feels weird because I I always like make a couple things I like I want to I want to point out and uh it's hard to transition from like total elation that this is happening literally in like in like 20 minutes i'm gonna be jumping on that that hangout so i don't know because after that i'm gonna be doing streaming with brock mclaughlin for a way out uh which this will happen in the past but it's on youtube.com slash we the nerdy hopefully you guys are subscribed to getting all the all those notifications um but last night yesterday was saturday Everybody is playing something. There's Splatoon, and Joe After Work is playing Arms, and everybody's everybody's playing stuff. And to be honest with you, like I went into yesterday really excited to play games, and then all of a sudden I kept reading about this horrible uh, tragedy that happened in in Canada land. Uh, this is this is about as Canadian as it gets. So there was a there's a junior hockey team out of Saskatchewan, the the rectangle province, like the sort of like trapezoidal shape. Um, just a, just a, just boys, man. Like these are 18 to 21 year old kids and they, they were on their bus and they were T-boned by a semi-truck and half of the people on the bus were killed. And this is, I don't know why, like, like stuff, the, the crappy part is stuff like this happens all the time. And that was my sort of like my first sort of reaction was like, well, I guess hack accidents happen. But as I read more and more into it, I just really got really depressed about it i really got sad to learn about just how this was a nothing like this they were just on the bus and then all of a sudden these guys are so close i think that's really the thing that that is the saddest part is that i read i read a few stories talking about how when you play on a team like that you they're not just teammates like this is they are family to each other and for them to be 
that young and to have that, the ones who survive to have that kind of experience, a lot of them are, they have a long road ahead of them. And then for the ones who didn't make it for their families, I just, I don't want to get into it. You know what? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, the point of all of this is I really just kind of needed to not do anything yesterday. Like I, I was trying to kind of like plug through some Far Cry. I was going to play with a friend. I was going to jump into Splatoon. I was going to do all of those things. And I just kind of like, I just needed to watch hockey. Like I just needed to sit on my couch and I don't know, just enjoy hockey. The other part of it too, that, that adds on top of all of this is even in the NHL, all like the, this, this hit everywhere. And there was a, there was a GoFundMe page that was created for the community and their families. And people are flying in from all over the place to, to be there to support the community and to support the families. And unfortunately it'd have to go to funerals and there's a GoFundMe page. And within the day, I think even now I was just checking they're they're creeping up on $4 million that's been donated across Canada and across the, the world, it seems. And so this whole thing kind of just hit me hard and I just needed to, to just chill. So I, the reason the other part of this is also an apology because I know I was, I was going to play games with a few of you guys uh, yesterday, this weekend. And I just wanted you to like that. Just, it continues to hit me hard. It continues to hit me. I'm reading stories about this 21 year old kid whose family had to make the hard decision of, um, I guess agreeing to the the donation of his organs. He had recent, like three weeks before, he signed his donor card, and that was it. He saved six lives with his young, strong heart and lungs and everything else. It's just, it's just incredible. So I don't want to bring this podcast down too much, but that's the reality of what yesterday was like for me. So I just wanted to bring you guys up to speed on that for whatever it's worth. That's as real as this today show is going to get in, on that level because. Caroline and I are going to have just an amazing chat from PSVG. You'll, uh, you often hear her on the Nintendo Shack, and you also saw her on If We Were at Nintendo just a couple of weeks ago. So why don't we just go ahead and get right into it? I don't think I've got anything else. I hope you guys are having a great day because it's about to get even better. Here she is from PSVG and Nintendo Shack, Caro. Caro? No last name? gone i'm leaving <laughs> skype this is it this is the day this is a brand new day it's amazing you have no idea. heaven's always like you need to watch your mouth because i'm like I, I see when when we're gonna do our e3 live reaction to nintendo mm -hmm. the filters out the window so oh, it's nice yeah because how do yeah. you like if you're actually reacting you can't be like oh and yeah exactly so when yeah. you watch E3 at home, do you do you just like get all up into it and stuff? Like, do, are you able to take time away and stuff? This is my first year that I'm taking off, but mostly what I did in the oh, past right. is that I would just bring my laptop to work and close my door. <laughs> yeah. And people would just be like, oh, she's working. But I'd have my earphones and I'd just silently be going, yeah! mm -hmm. Do people at work know that you're, that you're a geek? Oh, yeah. Like, I've got stuff. I've got, like, Chelsea made those little beads that you can iron together and you can make shapes and characters out of them. Yeah, Perlers, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know they had a name. I'm so... I've been, like, yeah. calling them that. They're, when I, like, they're, they're so like, all the rage on Etsy, yeah. Yeah, totally. Which, it turns cool. out, she should actually just, like, go ahead and sell them because, like, they're Oh, yeah, huge. there's like, a huge market for them. You can sell, like, the little tiny ones for, like, 20 bucks. And she's got one that are, like, bigger than my head. And my head is... It's, uh -huh. it's my big old Canadian <laughs> flappy head. I love the Pokemon sprites. Like, that is the biggest thing. So, I mean, like, if she wanted to do Pokemon sprites, everybody would be all over that. Yeah, she's got the little, like, squids and stuff and little Chi Chi fish and everything. It's, I oh. love it. And, like, slowly but surely, like, I never really set out to, like, I never brought in, like, a basket of stuff from my office and be like, okay, yeah. now I'm going to, like, nerd this place out. But slowly but surely, like, I've been in the same office for a number of years now, and it's like, I kind of look around, like, I got my little Lego guys here, I got, like, little mm -hmm. tiny Avengers over there, yeah, just everywhere you look. I never brought anything. I was blessed when we moved from the suburbs into the city, mm -hmm. when my husband started work back in October. Um, they didn't want to lose what I do, which is like a mixture of scientific illustration and I do the demand letters for all of the insurance companies. I just deal with personal injury work. And um, they're like, 
you can work from home four days a week, part time, and then you come in one day a week, and that's cool. So what? I just I I go I travel down forty five minutes to work to the office one day a week, and then I sit it on my computer at home the rest. Oh, of the week. that is the but freaking I'm, dream. I know it. It really is a blessing. I mean, mm. I told him I was like when my husband started working. So I, there's no reason for me to even be working and Brian told me that he said you know you don't have to work if you don't want right. to right yeah and um, and I was like but I will personally go crazy if I don't have something to do every day mm -hmm. so I would like to still keep doing it but I can't make that commute there and back every single day and they were very accommodating with it I was like okay great perfect what are the chances man I feel like I talk to no. people on a daily basis who are just like just get me out of this situation and this yep. is like this is absolutely perfect. I want to touch on this too. You bring up a good point that I think, especially as video gamers, as, as nerds who like, who would love nothing probably more than to sit in front of our TVs and play games for like as long as possible with as few interruptions as possible. Yep. You still, I can still identify with that notion of if I stay at home all day, every day, I will lose my mind. Oh yeah. Um, I, I just, I'm such a type A personality that oh, if yeah. I'm not if I'm not doing something, I there was a time between when I graduated from college and when I actually found my first job that mm -hmm. I it was the worst depression of my life that I just mm. I wasn't doing anything. Oh yeah. Um and I just felt worthless. Yeah. Uh, so like it's just one of those things that I like I mean, I wish I could be one of those people that was just happy doing nothing all day but it yeah i i have to be doing something otherwise it drives me crazy but mm -hmm. even though i am still working from home technically that day i'm taking off so i'm not gonna do my six hours from home i'm mm -hmm. just gonna dial out <laughs> everything's gonna be live streams and I, stuff. so is it just nintendo then that that you'll get hyped for like because there's still a lot of bleed over like especially well, now a little more bleed over maybe from yeah. ea hopefully well, maybe from you probably from ubisoft yeah, I watched Ubisoft last year because the Mario Rabbids thing was a huge deal, and you know Miyamoto went there and kind mm -hmm. of guested on their on their uh, stage, and it was, I mean, that was fantastic. But mm -hmm. um, I did watch. I don't remember who I watched. I used to watch EA games pretty religiously, but then mm -hmm. I've just gone by the wayside with them. The only thing I'm interested in EA games anymore is The Sims. Oh, um, I love it. Do you oh, play I love on 3DS? No, I play. I, I just like have The Sims Four on here. On your on your PC. Um, yeah, and I actually got the itch yesterday. I was like, I'm really craving The Sims. <laughs> I hadn't. And I <laughs> last time I logged on to Origin, it said you haven't logged on since 2016. I was like, there's no way it's been this long since I played this game. No kidding. Well, especially now because like we're well into 2018, so it's not like it's been a year to be, like it's I, been I it's know. been some time. It'd be kind of like if I jumped onto my Wii Fit again. It'd be like it's been 9,742 days. <laughs> so like dick. that's why I don't log into Animal Crossing anymore because it's like all the villagers are like, "You've been gone for three years. We thought you were dead." <laughs> yeah, they've got, but they've got like this graveyard started. Like as you've been gone, like all the villagers have just been like dying, and the kids that you knew Aww. as children are all grown up. And they're drug addicts and this dark version of I, Animal Crossing just because you I abandoned them all. There's so many good YouTube parodies about Animal Crossing and oh, like man. being the mayor. Oh my gosh. Just just awesome. I don't know if you're into Animal Crossing or not, but my I'm, wife got I'm me just... into it actually. Oh God. On the well, 3DS bless her. One. Yeah, she... yeah, bless her indeed. <laughs> it it I haven't played I don't think I've logged on to my account, but I, I was avid about it. I would go online onto these forums and trade like millions of bells for one cat villager to come to my village and come move on. in. No, I swear to God, I think I've probably paid 300 million bells just to have a full cat town. What? <laughs> this is on another level because like I pay off my house. So I'm like, I beat the game. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good. Oh, I, no. I definitely don't oh, no. go to the same level. Like, yeah, well, I've only done the one game. I, I think like with the 3DS, which the 3DS in a, in a lot of ways was like my big return to like what I would say is sort of like hardcore Nintendo fandom. Like I had the Wii and it was like, I was very happy with it. Like it was, right. I, you know, I got my parents playing bowling and whatever. But uh, but the 3DS was kind of like, oh, I'm going to be playing this in my bed until like three in the morning. You know, like I, I returned yeah, yeah. to that like ridiculous level of playing. Just mm -hmm. playing Mario Kart 7 until all hours. Like, Oh, I, know. I should I go back and see. 
Oh, that one I think I had probably more hours in Mario Se- Mario Kart Seven than eight or eight deluxe combined. Yeah. And like my poor hands have just been like I'll probably have serious issues as I get older. I'll because of the 3ds because it was the little one that I got her first. Yeah, I have the I have the original little one, but I upgraded to the XL, the the new Nintendo 3ds XL, which is pretty large. Mm-hmm. It's so nice, though, isn't it? And just having like new toys, new tech uh-huh. is just so I don't know. It's so stupid. Because, like, in I so many I ways, could, it's hardly different. I wish I had the money to collect, like, every single one because they come out with a new Pokemon Pikachu one. And I was like, they're so cute. I wish I could just have it on my shelf. And Yeah. It, it, Wait, I, 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 mean, it's too I can't steep. tell what shoulder over. Like, there's there's a couple. Well, we, we went over this after if we ran Nintendo as well. And that, yeah, that's yeah. why I can say, like, pretty honestly, that, like, the 3DS was my return to, like, hardcore fandom. Like, I... Although I do yeah. have a, a a wee mini up there, you can't see it, I don't think. But there is oh, yeah. one of those like red and the black red things, red, yeah, with the uh, white, oh, yeah, yeah, that doesn't do I, backwards I want- compatibility and stuff. Yep. There was a while that this is where like there was a couple years before Chelsea and I had kids where we just kind of like we got a little stupid. Like Amiibo came out at like the perfect time for us, like Skylanders and everything, and then Lego Dimensions just- went on sale at the perfect time. That's just it. I mean, I'm raking in the glory of not having kids right now but once it starts i know that it's just gonna it it only like tapers it a little bit just a little bit i think just a little i think (laughs) you still kind of find ways i mean we we haven't had to put lincoln through hockey yet or anything like you know stereotypically canadian like that yeah hockey is crazy expensive which is actually what i'm most oh i know i i my um physics teacher from high school is actually from michigan mm-hmm. and which is practically canada with, well, yeah he's, he's obsessed with hockey and the michigan teams up there and stuff and he like forced his child to go through hockey and mm-hmm. like all of the tournaments and stuff that he said that he had to pay for to go through it's just unbelievable he's like i'm you know break the bank but it's all he ever does and then life is for the kid, I guess. Oh, well, this is our savings account then. Everything behind me is our savings account. So at some point, yeah. we'll have to liquidate. and that will Oh, actually... no, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> Can you See, imagine? I, I'm just, like, saving all of it, and then it's going to be like, look, kid, Lion King moment, okay? One day, this kingdom will all be yours. <laughs> yeah. I'll put you in the will and make sure you get everything, just so long as you make sure that you don't ruin it. I'm just oh, terrified. That's so funny. I'm going to have to put a lock on the door when we get a game room, and it's just like, Mommy, I want to play with this one, and like strip it out of this box. And <laughs> Ooh, You can't destroy the box. Chelsea and I both keep boxes. Like We're, we're a little nuts about it, and it's getting to the point where – we either need a bigger house or just get rid of some of these boxes. And one of those solutions is way more realistic than the other. <laughs> well, I, I own every single Amiibo, right? Mm-hmm. So you own every single having... one like gold, yeah, only... gold Mega Man. Yeah. What are some of the other, like, what about the little, what's, what's that little Q? Is it box boy, box, 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 QB. Yeah. Is that his, Oh, his name is QB. Did you, yeah. what, what did we just break as we we're talking about? Okay. Oh, I was just, at... I was just dropping him down. Um, I took the legacy collection thing out of the box. Oh my gosh, I'm just making a mess. This is the best ever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I still have him in the box, and I have my gold and silver Mario's in the box. Mm-hmm. But um, I I had to take them out because they were just taking up way too much space. That's the thing. Well, you got that nice like kind of shelf behind you though. Is that? But it looks maybe just for books. <laughs> supposed to be a bookcase and our books are still both collectively nope. at our parents house just collecting dust digitize <laughs> them get them all on the computer and the kindle <laughs> Need no, space for I, was amiibo. Gonna, I was gonna i was gonna talk about this if we can like i bought this one and this oh. is a kickstarter book yes and let's. this oh my god this thing is absolutely beautiful now there's like a drama story that goes with how it got lost in the mail and how i didn't have it for 10 days that's literally on my list of things i wanted to ask you about so for the listeners what did you just pull out what is that thing let's 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 jump right into it okay so this is the nintendo 64 anthology and it it comes Um, in like a little sleeve thing that's that's the sound that you're hearing it's like it's like a sheath like a sword coming out of yeah um it's just got a really nice i guess this is made out of like better than cardboard it's kind of just like um japanese gosh, I don't know magic what you would call it <laughs> well they, these people are based out of france french um, magic yeah um math manet is the guy's name that created this thing mm-hmm. originally in france uh this was a kickstarter uh, I let you touch it so lovingly too you're just kind of like 
I like that's like a child. I love it. No, that's I really awesome. Am books. Um, and it comes with like a nice little attached bookmark and everything. This is the collector's edition. So there's a the regular edition is just this, mm -hmm. and the collector's edition has the sleeve. Now they had a Kickstarter exclusive edition that had an extra book that came in the sleeve that had a collection of all the box art from all the Nintendo games, oh, Nintendo Super games ever created. And I missed out amazing. on that. Oh, yeah. cause they, ha they only had so many like spots for that. Well, yeah, it was just whoever paid for it for the Kickstarter, like mm -hmm. that tier. Yeah. And fun fact, they have actually started, um, they, well, this Kickstarter's already ended, but they're making one for a GameCube as well. Oh. So, um, so yeah. did they start with this one with the 64? I think this is their first one. They did a PlayStation one, the original PlayStation. Oh, that's crazy. Um, I was going to say, because you started the 64, because that's manageable. There wasn't, an, I would venture yeah. to guess that that's probably got the fewest games out of all the Nintendo systems. I don't know if that's uh, true I think, or not. Yeah, I, I, it, it probably does. I haven't checked to see how but many there are, but I mean. PlayStation's uh, nuts. There's like 6,000 games on that thing. I know it's insane, and um, this thing this thing is jam packed. Like I have the uh, gosh, who makes those? The uh, Bitmap Books people make mm. the NES and the SNES and the Commodore sixty four, like all the original eight and sixteen bit game mm -hmm. books that are pretty much just an art book. Uh, you know, they've got really nice screenshots and stuff. This is jam packed with information. I mean, we've got interviews and. I was I gonna say the smell. smell. Oh, you like this is. Oh, if I had that in my hands right now, I would be doing exactly what you're doing right now. Yeah. Like, I'm. I feel like I'm looking at a mirror image, but not quite. Oh. And I get a certificate. Uh, the certificate of authenticity, copy number two hundred ninety out of a one. Oh, that's the thing that does it, doesn't it? You see, like a little like limited edition <laughs> something. You're like the number. It could be totally fake. They could have printed that on every single one of them. I know, but uh, that yeah, this is a wonderful collection to anybody's. Uh, Dang. So, if, okay, if you so collect books. Mm -hmm. uh, books about video games. This is definitely something you got to get. The Nintendo 64 Nintendo anthology. Nintendo. So you got it as part of the Kickstarter, which guarantees like one of the first no. prints. Oh, okay. No, I, it's online through Geeks Line Publishing. That was gonna be my next thing. If you didn't get it on yep. Kickstarter, yeah. Okay, I might and actually have, have to them get for this. Sale. Yeah. And the GameCube one is coming out in July of this year. They already had a Kickstarter for that one. Uh, and I'm sure they have Kickstarters all the time for what they're coming out with. But mm -hmm. follow them on Twitter because they have their announcements for Kickstarters and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm I'm all for the GameCube one when it comes out. I'm, I'm sad that I missed the Kickstarters on both of them because I really wanted that box art collection. Oh, that sounds incredible. How did you originally hear oh. about that? You know what? I go on Amazon and frequently like look for <laughs> art books. Okay. Uh, I'm I, since I'm a graphic designer and illustrator first and foremost. I really <laughs> love the uh, appreciation for like the art and the development, and the character and concept design and stuff. Yeah. So I love collecting art books about animation, video games, stuff like that. And I found this was like on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it was through a third-party sale, and I was like, what is this book? And they actually created it for the 20th anniversary of, well, when was the 20th anniversary? They have it listed on the card, but what it came out 2016, last. 2016, right? Probably something like that. Yeah, I think, yeah, it came out in like September of 2016 or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I get really you know, tricky were... about the 90s and then the, the aughts. Is that what's after? What's the 2000s? Is that the aughts? I can't even remember. The aughts? I've never heard of that before. I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember. Or that's maybe now. Because you, you like the 20s, 30s, 40s, those are easy. But like, what do you call yeah. like the, uh, like the hmm. first two? I, I don't thought know. it might be the aughts. Somebody, Luke Lore is definitely going to be correcting me on that one. He's a teacher. So. <laughs> well, what's the, what's, what are we going to call the 1910s and the 1920s? That's what I mean. It's, I don't know. The depression year? Yeah. <laughs> But um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, they came out with this for that that right, uh, the 20th anniversary. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of happened upon it on Amazon, and then got in on the GameCube Kickstarter late, and mm -hmm. that's how I just find out about these things. I'm uh, really obsessed with like art books and stuff. So I, if you ever if you ever see those like Nintendo things where they're like, oh, it comes with a sound selection CD and an art book, I'm always getting those. Oh no, kidding. <laughs> 
I yeah. freaking love it. Okay, so what do you think about um, like Kickstarter in general? Are you sort of like combing through there often as well? Um, I've started to just because mm. uh, Shantae, Half Genie Hero got its start from there, and I'm a big fan of the Shantae games. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thimbleweed Park, I missed out on that Kickstarter as well, and that was back in 2014, and now I've got uh, a limited run physical edition on pre-order mm-hmm. for that. Um, and you haven't been burned yet, I guess, is kind of where I'm headed with this like everything yeah, has actually no. worked out really nicely well i was interested in mighty number no. nine but oh, there it is. i yeah well i <laughs> the I, source I didn't, of the question yeah i didn't um <laughs> i didn't actually <laughs> really? put any money into that one and mm-hmm. i haven't i think i only put money into like five dollars into one kickstarter in my entire time of looking oh, okay. at kickstarters and yep. stuff uh not enough to get any physical rewards but most of the time I miss out and it's really unfortunate. I find out about these things late, which is why I'm glad I'm back into Twitter ever since mm-hmm. I started the podcasting because everybody just announces their stuff through Twitter nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I haven't gotten burn burned, yeah. which is a good thing. Yeah. Imagine if we were still coming through it. magazines for Kickstarters. It'd be like, they'd be over <sighs> by the time that that thing printed. Yeah. I never played mighty number no. nine and I have mm-hmm. no intention of doing it either. Well, and Chicken Wiggle was the first Kickstarter that I've ever done. And I feel like that's about as safe a bet as it gets. Yeah, and you know what? People have tipped me off to that game, and they said that, you know, people are trying to get it on the Switch, and I think that's a great idea. It's Mm -hmm. something that I would definitely want to play. It looks like a perfect fit for a Switch game. It totally is. It's And it, like, it was just, I think it would start a development before the Annex was really even called the Switch, and so who even knew if that was going to be a thing? So, like, to me, it's a perfect fit. And they got the HD upgrade as well. And they hit the first stretch goal, 35000 So they got an extra 5000 They're going to redo the soundtrack. I want to oh, say wow. it was a guy who did, like, all the rare games. I can't remember his name. Jacob Rush is going gonna, is gonna to totally smack me over the yeah. head. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that's what... Yeah, so Kickstarter is... Like Ukulele a, was another great game that came out of Kickstarter. Oh, great. Okay, so let's let's explore that word to describe ukulele. <laughs> oh, see, I, I still haven't played it because I always okay. hold out for physical editions. Mm-hmm. But as, you know, it's just something great when you see the creators of iconic games mm-hmm. like Banjo-Kazooie come back and say, hey, we want to come and create this game for you guys, but we need your help to do it. Or like the That's creator the of f- Mega Man. Let's just get behind yeah, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I well, keep bringing that, was, that up. You know what? It's a shame because that was actually like the the pictures and everything that were shown and displayed on the Kickstarter page were nothing like the final product. Yeah. And I think that's where everybody was really disappointed. The style of the Kickstarter images were just absolutely gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And I really was hoping for that style. And I think everybody else was too. And mm-hmm. just not end up that way. But ukulele i think is actually kind of stylistically very similar to what they pitched yeah i agree well and it like the like the vision was already i mean i guess the same could be said about Mega Man as well like this thing it's all just a spiritual successor it should have been sort of like within a box it should have been should have been okay so i I guess where i'm trying to go with this is like trying to establish a sense of like what is safe on kickstarter versus what's a little bit more risky and the the reason I think why Mighty Number no. Nine was so disruptive is because it sort of like put a wrench in that whole notion that there are some safe bets because that should have right. been as safe as it got and it wasn't. And then all of a sudden right. I'm thinking about these art books because the way that I like for me the way I originally got into video games was like I was I was already like geek inclined. I would stay I would I would be at a friend's house and they because they had an, an NES on the shelf. Like, it was normal to them, but I didn't have one, right. so I was just, like, staring at it, obsessively. I'm like, so when are we going to turn that sucker on? Like, let's play, let's play. And so by the time uh, my dad ended up getting me a couple of uh, PC gamers off the shelf at, like, the Safeway or wherever, like, 7-Eleven, mm-hmm. and I was just, like, to, to your point of, like, opening that book and just, like, smelling it, like, reading smelling it cover it, to yeah. cover, like, completely obsessed with this stuff. I basically got into, like, video games sort of by osmosis. Like, I just sort of, like, surrounded myself and just, like, reading stuff. And so this whole mm-hmm. diatribe, this whole rambling is actually to set up for you. To, I wanted you to talk about um, your artistic inclination. So you're surrounding yourself even now, like, you're in it. You're surrounding yourself with art books. And I'm like, right. 
that's how I learn. Like, that's what I would, that's, that's what I should do is like, I should get mm-hmm. be getting myself around some of these books of different art styles and illustrations and things like that design. There's a amazing, or I think it's really interesting, uh, Netflix documentary called Abstract on right now. I've heard of it. Yeah. I've heard of it. Super cool. I don't know if it's any good. I'm a, a, like a no way able to evaluate like the legitimacy of it, but I'm like, there's yeah. just certain practices that come along with that, that they're introduced in that. Whereas like this guy has this notebook and he's just drawing something every single day. And then he puts like right. sort of limitations like, okay, you've got to use like this red ball on every drawing and make something different every single time. And it's just mm-hmm. so incredible, the creativity, like through that limitation. Yeah. As, as somebody that went through art school, we did have those kind of exercises where, you know, you give yourself limitations, mm-hmm. but you have a guideline that you have to do. Uh, and I actually kept going through that as just through my own, uh, my illustration group is called Caroline Design. Whoop nice. Do. <laughs> yeah, it rhymes. Um, but, you know, I just like did this work through um, where I would be given like a word. So like the word would be blue mm-hmm. and you would have to do something that would be representative of the word yep. or the the word would be, um, I mean, not a color, but, you know, just just like a mood or invoking or something. And it's just very interesting to see what comes out of you from what you are given when you're just given a prompt. Right. Uh, and I, I think that's fantastic. I actually might start watching that show then if, if he's doing something similar to that, because that's just what a lot of artists do online. People through live journal and deviant art and stuff. It's yeah, a I, very I, common thing. I think he turned out to be, uh, I think the whole reason he made his whole documentary is because he's like this, um, maybe one of the most published, uh, the New Yorker cover artists, like very like that style of, of art. And so, yeah, he talks about just like he'd be in New York city at some point, then he moved back to Germany or something and Mm -hmm. architecture and how that kind of influences. And I always think that in another lifetime, I'm super artistic. Like in another lifetime, I'm, I'm like locked in my basement with canvas and paint and everything like that because like mm-hmm. that in my heart, I, I feel like that's so amazing and fantastic and, and interesting to me. I just don't have, it's not in my hands. Like I don't have the ability right, to right. actually, and when, and maybe I just haven't practiced it. I shouldn't say that. Like it, there are a couple of examples. I do it. I did. Um, you, did you ever follow Skylanders? Did all, did you oh, ever yeah. do Skylanders? Oh, yeah. Chelsea was yeah. obsessed. So when we got married, I painted her like a, a, a hot dog. Oh, a little character. He's the cutest little I'm, guy. He's made out of fire and lava. I just mentioned that I'm very upset that we haven't gotten a switch announcement for the spy room remastering. Mm, I'm okay with it. It's going to be, <sighs> you know, that. But see, here's the as thing. Somebody, <laughs> as somebody that has nothing but Nintendo consoles, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, it's not okay. even a PC announcement. It's okay. Nintendo Switch is going to be better for not having the, the garbage that has Spyro on it. Are you I think, serious? I think Spyro oh is so boring. I think it's so oh, bad. See, I grew up with it. So I think that's probably why I just have, I, I mean, I just love seeing something remastered. It does look and amazing. Seen, I'll give it that. Do you see the side by side? Like they're doing like yes, frame by frame, yes. shot by shot. Yeah, it looks. Yeah. Makes that's you, what I makes love feel about old, though, stuff like bit. that. It's like how you drew when you were... 16 versus how you drew when you were 26 Mm -hmm. in many ways i feel like there's probably things that it would be the opposite like running like if i were like to show like you don't get better with age i don't think with like i'm a i'm a horrible so like i think as i've not practiced any of that stuff i'd probably be better back then but yeah Mm -hmm. it looks like it it's just a reminder of how um what we what we were just okay with the six frames per second on golden eye that we got and stuff like that I was watching, um, I was watching an old U2 DVD with Lincoln the other day. We were trying to make like music as, as every day as possible. And I remember like watching this thing like all the time. And I just looked at just the, the square. It wasn't even widescreen. And it was like mm-hmm. from 2000, which sounds like it should be like just yesterday. But that's a, that's almost <sighs> two decades ago. 20 years ago. Super, about. super old. And they all looked old back so then. Old. I know. Yeah. It's, it's kind of sad. But you four by three ratio, baby. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking like, oh, with widescreen, this is stupid. Like you just, it just stretches the picture. Why would I want, why would I want that? Now I can't, I can't even live without, I've got two monitors here that I can't, I I can't live without. What are some of the things, how did you end up actually um, sort of like first getting into, into games? You mentioned you had PlayStation for Spyro and everything. (laughs) So, but how, like, where was it first introduced for you? 
I never actually owned PlayStation. Okay. I just played it over at my cousin's houses. Um, yes, that's but, the best. Let them buy everything. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, it's just like, well, mom, they have such and such over there. It's like, well, you can go over there and play it. Oh, it's the best know? response. Like, you think you've got them, right? As a kid, you're like, well, they've got it. Why wouldn't we have it? They're like, yeah, exactly. that was basically what my parents did. Now we don't have to buy anything. It's, Neighbor Matt's got everything. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so I would have, you know, I had the Segas growing up. My very first console was a Sega Genesis. Oh, no. Oh, you uh, poor thing. I don't know, but I absolutely loved it. <laughs> and, kidding, you know, I was, a, I was a Sega girl before I started being a Nintendo girl. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the cool kids had Nintendos. Right. And Sega was kind of this, I mean, it was cool. I'm not going to lie. For me, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. It was uh, black? But... Like, it looked good? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was... <laughs> <laughs> but um, it it's definitely... Cool. I'm appreciative of my foundations in Sega. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that I had Nintendo to always look towards. Because when 64 came out, I, I was like, Mom, we have to get this one. We have to have it. And um, Was it just you? Are you an only child? No, I have a younger sister. Oh, okay. So two, was she gamer, too? She's younger than me. Well, my sister is uh, more of a sit back and watch her bigger sister play because <laughs> the majority of the games that I wanted were single player. And of course, my parents are like, why don't you let her play? And she's like, I don't want to play. I just want to watch. Oh, nice. So, that works out. Yeah, I, she did actually have a DS uh, and she loved Animal Crossing, mm -hmm. uh, but she did not obviously take to it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. uh, She's still interested in stuff like that. I, she came over to the house the week that M Mario Odyssey came out, and she watched me play it. And she's like, "This is crazy! I can't believe that it looks like this." And you know, just for somebody that's been out of the regular knack of how video games have developed, it's mm -hmm. amazing for her. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was my, how I got into Genesis, or how I got into video games was Genesis. My uncle had one, and uh, he gave it to me for my third birthday. Holy crap! Um, yeah, yeah. So I can't wait was, to uh, like Link will never really get anything for his birth because it'll always it already be here. Be like there. I don't, That's I don't exactly know exactly how it'll be for us. Mm -hmm. Nice. So what about you mentioned sort of maybe kids in the future for you guys? Are you thinking uh, at some point absolutely. or just whatever? I have a lot of growing up to do. I just say that, um, and I just I have very little patience. I do want children. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband wants children as well, but we uh, we're paying off student loans right now too. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, you never have a good time to have kids. You just have kids as they come, and you know, there's never a time where you're not saving up money or buying a house. Uh, but we would like to be in a house. My husband's actually looking. At me <laughs> He's like, who are you weird. telling this stuff to? <laughs> <laughs> who asked these kind of questions? <laughs> <laughs> he just gave me this like look like what the hell we're having kids <laughs> no he, we, we talk about it but i just i thought I, we were gonna talk about video games today what is this show <laughs> <laughs> but you know everybody jokes with me they're like you are so geeky and you have so many games and just so much stuff that you're gonna be like a great mom that's and the I'm, thing i don't know about that i i'm terrified that i'm just gonna kill him but <laughs> 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 if you if you just I'm, I'm terrified like it's oh, just one of, those, one of those things where it's like oh my god i forgot to feed it you know yeah no cats i don't are easy i have two cats and the cats go to the food bowl when they're hungry they go to the litter box when they have to go to the oh, bathroom man. i Babies feel like are... they make the same sound though when they're hungry or when they need something it, it's pretty close to just like a, ah! just a just i don't even know what that was I'd... lincoln is lincoln's yeah. becoming a little a little um a little needy these days it's uh the last really? the last like two weeks because he, he's learned to crawl and he's kind of like crawling up you like he'll grab your jeans so if you don't have oh, like if you're yeah. in sweatpants your pants are coming down so like oh, this no. is this is where i was just thinking about this this morning i'm like my dad didn't really ever wear sweatpants like and that's all i ever want to do i just want <laughs> like when i get up if i'm not going to work i'm just i just want to be in pajama pants all day yeah today i made the switch that's today what? i'm like i gotta wear i gotta have these these pants like more Attach. I got Aww. a belt and everything because he's crawling up, and um, yeah, if he if he can't quite get there, he'll start to he'll start to fake cry. So we're gonna have to have the little chat of the the boy who yeah, cried wolf. Yeah, you, you can't. Know? Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. I uh, want to enable. I have very grown up conversations with him. Something. Yep. Nope. He's he's not even a he's year old. old. 
He's he not he'll even be, a year. He'll be a year oh old next gosh. week. Actually, next Saturday is his first birthday. So Smart kid. No, well, yeah, they're all manipulative. That's the thing with manipulation. I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. It's so talking about having that like inner child in you. I think will make you a great mom. And it's it's the Absolutely same as okay. like it's the same as Chelsea. And on the point of you never really gonna have. I don't know. This is just this is. I feel like this is turkey. Uh, my wife does a parenting podcast called Apparently, because a parent oh, is in the cute. and um, precious. I feel like that everybody should go subscribe to that because she's a great mom and she has great things to say. And uh-huh. but it is, I think, a lot of just remembering what it's like to be a kid. And I I was listening mm-hmm. to two people talk, Johnny Casito and Dave Moore. They were chatting and and I think Johnny was a little frustrated. And Dave was like, "Well, think about this. There's there's a good 15 years between them." So right. Dave's like, "I remember what it was like to be a kid because I wasn't too long ago." And I feel like that that helps a lot to like remember mm-hmm. to try and lock in on those, those memories. And maybe that's something that as we podcast and we remember, Oh, like this is what it was like when I was like four five, six years old playing these games. Mm-hmm. And like, I remember like what was important to me or right. what, and how did I learn my lessons? I think that's it. I don't know for whatever that's worth. Yeah. And you know, I might start my kids on stuff that was very simplistic back, mm. you know, when I, when the I was age old question. Up. Mm-hmm. And, what games and, do you start them on? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just, for me, it was what colors were pretty. Yes. See? And uh, what just appealed to you as, like, just staring at a screen. Mm-hmm. Um, something that was, I hate to say it, something that was 16-bit Sonic the Hedgehog was much more appealing than going over to my friend's house and playing Mario on the NES. It was objectively worse. Right. But mm-hmm. I, that's just that's just going backwards what you've originally been started with, which for me was Sonic and then going backwards mm-hmm. I, as as I got older and became, you know, got into my teenage years. I appreciated the eight bit stuff more, mm-hmm. uh, but just something that appeals to children, just that bright pop of color um, easy, but not too easy where they are going to keep coming back to it. Mm hmm and not get bored with it do you think but not fresh do you think i'm, I'm sort of going to wrap around a couple topics here into this one thing because nintendo obviously has never really been pushing the power uh you play with power but they, they've never had the most powerful <laughs> box they've always they're always like creating these like weird limitations and i'm thinking about our conversation just a couple seconds ago of like that artistic like do this thing you want to do you want to make a thing but you can't go too far you've got you've got to work within this box like right. do you think from that like is it an artistic thing that nintendo does or is it more competitive like why why do they keep doing that and is that a like a secret to their success maybe uh at first i thought that they were just trying to keep the family uh you know appealing to everybody of all ages right right but with the switch and you see the majority of their advertising was geared towards young adults, people mm-hmm. our age. And clearly that's not their MO, uh, just to be family friendly to everybody. Right. I, I mean, the games that have been coming out recently, Xenoblade 2 has some language in it. Oh. And Bayonetta is, uh, you know, <laughs> Bayonetta. Yeah. And uh, it's just... I, it doesn't bother me that the specs on the system are worse than PlayStation or Xbox. And it's not like they're battling it out over who's got the best graphics, who's got the best shooter type yeah. thing. I appreciate going to a Nintendo game or a Nintendo console and knowing that I'm going to be getting stuff that is not exactly what guys want to play. Those mm-hmm. first person shooters. Two bros. That, yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta you gotta have your um, mouth all to the side like this and drink your Mountain Dew and give everybody the <laughs> finger and hate everything. Um, you're giving me flashbacks to high school, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> and uh, got my hat all tipped up that, like this. You know, everybody <laughs> oh, had the emo haircut mm-hmm. back then, and just you know, the guys actually straightened their hair. It was just bizarre. Oh man, okay, yeah. Um, but but it just it doesn't bother me. I appreciate it, and I think that's why I'm so drawn to it because it's not what everybody else is doing. It's yep. it's a breath of fresh air type thing, mm-hmm. and just like it's like Yoshi is. Everybody would say, "Oh, write that off as a kids' game." Oh, that's a kids. You know, 
it's bright it's colorful it's now yarn and you know it's meant for kids Mm -hmm. i find more enjoyment in that personally than i do going and shooting up a bunch of zombies in a video game what what that's not you don't want to just like (laughs) kill three thousand of the same character over and over again which i don't mind doing just i know people like sean you do that all the time but i get the point like i understand like all sides of the of this not even an argument just the discussion and like even Yoshi is a really cool example of the let's do okay we've got this character it can do x y and z things it can like kind of just try to fart its way up a a, a jump just pretty much just kind of like yeah. trying to keep pushing it out <laughs> but like make it in yarn like yeah why like i just love that. and i remember that's one of the I don't know how many of these videos caro that we've watched over the years of e3 reveals and all these different like, oh, trailers yeah. and stuff that one I will remember probably for the rest of my life of just like that room full of yarn and they're just sitting in the middle mm-hmm. of it and it's just like what a what a beautiful picture. Yep. And that alone yeah. makes me just buy like we've got two switches right now. We don't need two, but like Chelsea mm-hmm. and I both have one just because. I don't know. We just want our own Nintendo. Mhm. Well, I mean, I, you you'll probably eventually have to have it if you want to play each other in a two player or something. That was pretty much it. It was like one day where like we should probably play Splatoon together. That's yeah. it. That was the one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, or you can move the dock into another room or something. That's something that eventually mm-hmm. I'm going to have to do. That was the other piece, too, is we wanted another dock. We're like, well, it's like a hundred. Like here, it's like a hundred dollars mm-hmm. for another dock. Yeah. So that gets you like a like a third of the way there. So you might as well just right. go get the other switch. And maybe that's why they price it that way. Maybe. And you go like, why would you just get that? Are you the um in your house? Are you like by far the biggest geek? Are you the only geek? Well, when you say house, do you mean between me and my husband, or yeah. do you mean or your cats? Uh, <laughs> I think I think if Brian were still here, he would tell me that I'm the biggest geek. He's gotten to the point that he watches me play video games mm-hmm. more than he actually plays them himself, and he complains because if I am watching him play a game, I'm a backseat gamer. Yeah, you I are. Tell, I tell him how to do everything, and he gets so mad at me for mm-hmm. doing it. And I get mad when he doesn't. You can't help yourself. Time. No, I can't. What it's games just is a, he playing? Uh, you know, he was really into Fire Emblem Warriors when we got oh, it. Oh, nice. Just, yeah, he liked Hyrule Warriors a lot. Yep. And uh, we both played Splatoon together. We kind of share the same character. Uh, but he's really into ranked, where I'm not into ranked. Me either. I, I don't think I've ever done ranked. Ranked is too stressful for me. Yeah. Um, I think I spent too many years trying to rank myself on mmos that i got burned out <laughs> that's the thing is i don't do really any of that like hard like in call of duty it would be like hardcore and whatever mm-hmm. like i don't like i'm good normal difficulty yeah. everything like unless there's like some weird achievement mm-hmm. that i'm after and i'm feeling kind of gutsy for it yeah. normal is good enough he, for me he likes rank because he says well it gets you more exp it gets you more gold and i'm like mm. it might but i don't want to tear my hair out trying to do it mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. i just prefer the regular streamline and he loves single player so we're really excited for the octo expansion coming out in the summer uh because we are both going to be getting in and on that one mm-hmm. again do you think that's uh, going to breathe new life like bring new people into oh, Splatoon, or is it just going to revive people who are already there um i think more revival yeah but you know it's for people that are still thinking, hey, I should probably get a Switch, it might, people who are playing Splatoon might tip them off to it. It's kind of like a word of mouth thing. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm I'm playing it because this came out. Mm-hmm. And I think the price for the DLC is completely reasonable. You're getting a whole new expansion pack for, you know, a full player, single player mm-hmm. campaign. Well, uh, speaking of like safe places to put your money or like to gamble with your money, I think Nintendo DLC is kind of like. Absolutely. Right. I mean, ever since Mario Kart, everybody knows it. It's just, yeah, uh, I've bought probably the DLC for most every single game that's come Mm -hmm. out in Xenoblade 2, the Mario Kart 8 DLC, uh, Mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild, Fire Emblem Warriors and Hyrule Warriors DLC. It's just, it's, you get such good deals and for what they are creating in Smash Brothers, of course. (laughs) I totally missed Fire Emblem Warriors. That was one that when they announced, I was like, that's the one I want. I like, Mm -hmm. like, I want that. That's a, that's an expansion of a world that I want. I feel like with with Zelda, I get enough of the hack and slash, and like of course you can play with all the different characters, but like that wasn't enough for me to be so super excited about it. But with Fire Emblem, like it's right. totally different. It's like you get little brief moments of that, 
in the little like the little cutscene or whatever you want to call it when you actually go ahead and attack and you go and you get that little like brief moment yeah like, i want more of that that's exactly what i want so, and yeah. I'm, I'm shocked that i didn't pick that one up that, that seemed like did not it's, do so well um i don't know because fire emblem is such a niche ip for nintendo true uh i think that's the only reason that it didn't sell as many units uh, but I, I personally love it. The only reason that I haven't played it as much as I have is because it literally came out about a week before Odyssey came out. That was it. Yes. Horrible or, release or, time. Yep. Yeah. It was, it was boom, boom, right there. And Should be I right think now. We, Should have released we today. Played, sure, yeah, because we have such a lull right now. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have mind waiting. Uh, but it's it's we played through the story, and we haven't played through all the maps, but it's just one of those things that, it's therapeutic for me. Mm-hmm. And I think it's therapeutic for my husband, Brian, too. We just love going through and slashing through hordes of enemies. Yep. The only reason that I got Zelda uh, Hyrule Wars is because Zelda is my main IP. It's yeah, my favorite. Of course. Uh, and, and that was a no-brainer for me. And I actually had never played a uh, D- Dragon Warriors, Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors. Mm-hmm. I'd never played one of those games before. And uh, it really tipped me off to the genre. And I am kind of a huge fan now and right they... all you want to do is just take this giant sword and just bash 50 guys yeah. and just see them, like do the sorrow yeah. thing and collect the costumes collect the swords mm-hmm. upgrade your weapons I, I think it's a really cool uh little mm-hmm. addition to what ips they've already got what do and you... I, I i think they should keep doing it what do you think of switch land right now 2017 obviously incredible what do you think of switch land 2018 you kind of mentioned this lull but like are we like, how are things, like, when you talk about it on, on the Nintendo Shack, which we'll get to, like, what's, um, the, what's, the, what's the vibe? <laughs> what's the vibe in Nintendo Land right now? Well, we're kind of bored. Yeah. Uh, because, like I said, we didn't know what we were talking about last week, and I honestly haven't listened to the guys this past week, but I wasn't on it. Uh, it we're just kind of sitting and waiting for stuff. Oh. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is coming out in May, but I've already played through the original on the Wii and the 3DS. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just kind of, you know, I'm waiting for E3. It's kind right. of, I, I'm, I'm still playing games. I'm playing games that I bought and have a backlog on. Mm-hmm. But I'm kind of just sitting and waiting I, I don't think it's a bad thing i think they've given us plenty the first year to keep totally. our keep keep our feet wet and you know just keep keep going on that mm-hmm. regard but i just you think that there's a lull and you're we're just used to something coming out i think we got i, I think we got a little bit spoiled something coming out every single month so yes. a big title and I don't think that's going to be happening until probably the fall when we're getting ready for holiday season again. To be honest with you, as somebody who has less and less time to dedicate to gaming, like that is something where if there's a, if <laughs> it sounds so counterintuitive to what everybody would be screaming about, because I'm, and I'm glad that you mentioned like, it's not such a bad thing because now we can actually go back and play all the things that we sure. missed. Like I want, I want this lol. I actually look for when a game is delayed I'm, like nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. That gives me, like, that was going to be an awful time for you to come out. So at least that clears up my (laughs) schedule a little bit. Thank you for taking care of that. So, yeah, I'm glad we kind of just kind of outlined that as as, if we're creating content and podcasts, probably not the best. But maybe the the what you play in segments are kind of like, oh, well, I haven't been able to get to whatever. Like, I should Mm -hmm. be, like, right now would be a great time for me to just go pick up Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U. I still have it. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's still still right here. I I hate holding this stupid gamepad. Like, I I hate this more than ever now. It's so clunky now. Uh, But, yeah, yeah. great game if you haven't played it. Have you played the original one? No, I haven't. I think maybe, like, Uh, a couple seconds of, like, maybe a level or two or whatever. But, like, really, that's it adored the first game Mm -hmm. so much and then the second game just is kind of the icing on the cake of the first game (sighs) i that and i love those just stupid action games i love just like i don't even care like i even like the old god of war games whatever just i'll just sit there Mm -hmm. and like hack away i don't have to learn systems or anything like that it's just super easy pressing buttons um before we close things out though i want to make sure that i get to talk about the nintendo shack because is this was this the first time that you had like really started podcasting at all yep. or even on a regular that was your first podcast i had no idea like, like i big I'd leagues, right to, out of the gate right out of high school i listened to a couple of podcasts yeah. um 
<laughs> right out of, you know, it was, um, it's, yeah. Donnie approached me in GameStop, mm-hmm. and I know we <laughs> talked the about that. Best but story. I I know, and it's just it was such a I, I've always geeked out with people about mm-hmm. it, but I've never had that outlet like that true outlet where I get to like just gab. Yep. And I've always <laughs> enjoyed doing that, but this kind of organizes it and it gives me a chance to think about things from different perspectives or yep. gives me topics that I really wouldn't address. It's kind of opened my eyes to uh, a lot of different things because, uh, you know, some of the guys on Nintendo shack, they play devil's advocate all the time and, the, and they crap on Nintendo for a bunch of stuff. And at first I was so quick to defend. It's like, how dare you? Yeah. Uh, but now it's just kind of, gotten me to be like you know they're not the perfect company that i would like to think that they are oh no it's sort of like it's like when you realize your dad isn't superman oh <laughs> a horrible realization it's it, it it it's just kind of in, in addition to it being a great way for me to express myself mm-hmm it's been a way for me to kind of grow in development of the way that I approach. Um, oh gosh, I'm just trying to word it correctly. So I don't like offend anybody <laughs> approach things to the point that I'm not being uh, b- too brash or too, I don't know. I'm, you I'm, I'm not exactly from talking sure to Donnie word. on a regular basis. Yeah, I learned wow. what not to do. <laughs> oh no! I'm sh- <laughs> He's gonna kick me. But I thought um, he was gonna kick me, but he like changed midway. He's like, oh, kick shot. No, nope. no, no. Donnie's actually Donnie and I. That's why everybody thinks that we're like people are. Brother and are sister, you sure you're not the same person. Yeah, uh, because our likes and dislikes are so similar and our Mm -hmm. way of thinking is so similar about a lot of games and when he doesn't agree with me on something that's when i'm most upset uh when he didn't play xenoblade 2 to like the end that's when i was really upset because that's he disappointed you favorite games yeah yeah i value donnie's opinion so highly Mm -hmm. Uh, i think a lot of people do yeah, I'm I'm very thankful for the opportunity that he's given me and that all of the guys have given me. And I, it's just one of those things where I was like, yeah, I'd love to, you know, contribute as a blogger or something. Right. But I've broken out of my shell, I guess. It's just kind of one of those things where I enjoy talking on podcasts mm-hmm. more than I do writing a review. Yeah. And that's what I always tell people is like, whether it's a thousand people or one person, if it's just your mom listening, it is like, <laughs> it's the best thing to just like have that schedule because we've all we've all escaped school at this point. School's probably and like right. work is like the, the schedule that we don't really want to address. It's it, it sucks. Nobody really wants to relate to that. But like school gave you that Monday through Friday, you're gonna do this, and then you've got these assignments and everything is is there. Mm-hmm. And then you're like set out into the world. You're like, what the hell am I gonna do? So yep. it is nice to have that that structure and practice, even just practice talking because. Every every right. aside from it's a podcasting, charismatic thing. totally. We we we're all like texting each other or whatever, and I do I do all of that as well. But I even myself was realizing I didn't know how to like talk to people, and that, right. why would I start this show? Like I just this was actually speaking of artistic through uh, artistic creativity through limitation. I didn't have a co-host, so I'm like, well, I want to oh, do wow. this. So <laughs> like, and every co-host at, the, at back then, like I've discovered now that everybody and their dog has a podcast. But in the beginning, yeah. like, I couldn't find anybody to podcast with. So it was, I guess I'll just do do guests. I love this Mark Maron character. Mm-hmm. He does this show. And that's sort of like, everybody's heard me talk about that a thousand times now. But I think yeah. everybody should do a thing like this. Because you just never know. Not even like, it's not even like you're going to be, like, reaping rewards necessarily. But you find mm-hmm. just your, like, I, like, me at the beginning of this is totally different i feel like it's probably the same for you oh absolutely i was so silent and quiet and shy and then i just got to the point where i jumped in and started being assertive mm-hmm. and talking you know maybe talk not talking over people as much as donnie but <laughs> <laughs> there's two there's I, two i know i know but i i like to get my points in you know yeah. i just want to make sure that what i've got to say is actually heard mm-hmm. so are you you're a regular on nintendo shack now but you you missed this week maybe I scheduling suppose, yeah yeah 
Uh, I'm not on every week. It's just whenever whoever's in rotation. I think Donnie and Jason are considered the two guys that that run the thing. But uh, I'm just, I'm in there at least once or you twice a month. Push your way in there. It, tell me, is the only way to get the Nintendo Shack just on the main PSVG feed? Do we need to? Is this maybe the third knock? If it's not the case, I, can you subscribe I separately? Believe, I believe I I don't know. Okay. I don't know because I I'm just. Donnie. I should have asked Donnie. Fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think you have to go through the podcast family, but I'm not exactly certain. I'm gonna we'll have to. We're, we're gonna have to talk to Donnie that. about this. I think yep. it's just a little because intimidating some... for me. There's just there's like what are there six podcasts that come out every single day on the PSVG oh network? My gosh, uh, well it's like you know we got bored with video games. We've got the early morning gamer. Mm -hmm. uh, got OT. OT. Mm -hmm. um, oh gosh, uh, Xbox Empire. Yep. Uh, we, I mean, it's, it's, we used to just do the one show a week and talk for an hour or two about stuff that was going on. And then we, everybody, wanted, everybody wanted to talk about something, but this was the compromise. And I think it's a great compromise. It is There's actually an amazing thing. Something for everybody. That's the thing. So I just, I take a shot, but it's also Donnie. The main. Yeah. It really is amazing. Everything that I think what he's done is something that we've all like wanted to do. And then Donnie's just like, oh, I'm. I kind of already did it, so uh, there you go. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. Caro, I want to talk about, lastly, actually two things. I want to talk about mm -hmm. your name, Caro. Yeah. Don't like Caroline? Is that the, the is, is it just an, or you just prefer, you just want to be different? Um, It's just a, a nickname. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know where it became. Is like, it offensive that people call you Caroline? No. You're not no, like, not at all. I was. I was one of three Carolines in my high school, private school class of 68 people. Oh, so no. <laughs> three out of 68. Went, and we all sat in a line. So it's like when somebody said Caroline, we all turned to oh, look. Oh, God. Yep. Um, I, people can call me Caroline. People can call me Caro. It doesn't matter. A lot of people call me C. So. Oh, I like C. Yeah. That's people what at work call sometimes me C. We'd be very, some people call me Scene. Because they don't scene. know how to. <laughs> They don't know how words work or seen bean. Seen, we call we call mm. Sean Bean seen bean. <laughs> oh, Sean Bean is. Fine. I was I was thinking because like nobody knows who Connery is anymore. Anyway, that's a whole other aside. Oh. Uh, my last question is: We kind of talked about this a little bit um, with E3 coming coming up. What are you looking forward mm -hmm. to in 2018 for video games? What's kind of the thing that, or a couple things that you're you're anxious and anticipating? Smash, and of course we gotta. Yeah, we've got to have the Smash roster characters that were cut. Like, and, and it's it's more of a nostalgia thing for me. Not that I ever played with them, but you know, Ice Climbers has got to come back. Yeah, the seriously. Uh, Wolf, I would love to see in there, and a lot of characters that were die people were dying to have mm -hmm. that they uh, put on the ballot. Uh, I think that would be a great way for them to come into the uh, the game as just if they're making a new game. How late in the um, year do you think that's coming? Have you guys, have you talked about that? Have you predicted? We've talked about that. Uh, I believe that since the, a lot of people think that it's going to just be a holiday, excuse me, like a November release. And um, I, if Nintendo is going to pop out this uh, actual online service in September, I think that's the date that they've said. I think Smash absolutely hits day one of the service because there's no other reason for them to really have the service come up aside from Splatoon and maybe Mario Kart 8. Pokemon. We think Pokemon is coming. I, I think Pokemon is coming by the end of the year. Donnie thinks it's coming beginning of next year. I feel okay. So I think if we look at just the online service coming in, I think that does lean strongly towards a Pokemon thing. Mm-hmm. By everything else in my gut tells me it's not ready yet. Like, I don't know why. I no, I, I feel I like we probably would have heard about it by now. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. Like, it could we could hear about it on Monday by the time this thing even airs. And then... No, oh, this is I don't true. Know. Who knows, but... I don't think it takes that long for them to pop out a Pokemon series or a game. But I, do you or want, like, the same old, games. same old? Like, would, they, would you be okay with that? Or do you are you expecting, like, next generation, this is a totally different experience because it's on Switch? I think just the fact that it's going to be on Switch is uh, bigger. Makes it makes and the old better. thing even new. Yeah, that's a right, good way to look right. at it. Uh, but you know, Sun and Moon was my favorite installment in the series so far, just because they shook it up with the trials instead of your eight gems. Mm -hmm. If they go back to the gems, I'm not going to be upset. It's just 
seeing it on a big screen with wonderful graphics, I think it's probably going to make it for me. I still actually have that experience every once in a while. Like Stardew Valley, I was playing mostly in handheld mode. And then all of a sudden yeah. I put it in the dock and I was like, whoa. Like, it's yeah. not like that. It's not like it blew my hair back or anything, but it was just kind of like, oh, yeah. It's really fun. It's the same Especially, thing. Especially yeah. bigger. I went from a handheld to a 60 inch and it's like, oh, my gosh. Did you ever have the old or did you ever get your hands on one of those um, Super Game Boy where you could have like a Game oh, Boy thing yeah. plugged into when the Super Nintendo? You put the Game, Game Boy cartridges in your SNES. Yeah, absolutely. Blows my mind. Are you kidding me? Uh, just thinking about that, like for the first time, you're like, there's no way this is going to work. And then you yep. click the little button and it pops up and it just holy cr oh yep. i oh memories nice little square ratio on the screen i, I remember it well love it oh man good times yep carol tell everybody where they can find you on the internet this has been an amazing chat thank you so much and yes, thank you for I'm moving so me over excited. to discord this is amazing well, hopefully this works in the future for you happy accident like i said i, I am the nintendame perfect at Twitter, mm -hmm. and you can find me uh, in the PSVG Discord. Uh, I'm mostly in the General and the Nintendo Shack. Nice. Well, thank you again. This has been oh, I didn't need like a like a I deep know. conversation today. I just needed a nice little like geek out. And so thank you very much for that. A little talk Saturday about art type thing. Yeah, this is perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I don't know if it's this empty house or what it is, but I feel very good about this episode. Thank you so much to Caroline Caro. I'm glad that we finally are doing whatever we possibly can to make this not so much the, the white 30-year-old man show. So if anybody you know, yes, you listener, if you know if you know any lady, if, can we just get a little diversity up in here? I really enjoyed February. We've unfortunately returned a little bit to We the White Cast. Let's get it. Let's get more people. Let's get more perspectives. That was so much fun. Thank you so much, Caro, at the Nintendame. Great name also, by the way. Check out the PSVG Network of Podcasts. Just one feed gets you 6,000 shows a day, I think. Something like that. The music, Animal Crossing. How cr Crossing. Cr crossing. Animal Crossing. How could I not? OC Remix. Uh, it was called Letting Go kind of nice i guess um i love this this tune just gets me going you guys uh thank you everybody for subscribing if you forgot leave a thumbs up if you have not gone to the bathroom today if you've not sat on a toilet go there now it's way too late for that and while you're there rate us on itunes it's a great it's it's a, it's a two for one it's a two for follow me on twitter at sean capri sean like connor capri like the pants follow the website we the nerdy and the, 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 sh the why am i so excitable Somebody needs to come home and like get me under control. Goodness gracious! We the GamerCast is the uh, is the show's handle. It really helps big shows go like, hey, this guy's not a total noob at this. There's actually people who pay attention. So thank you. That really really helps. Remember, I'm on If We Ran Nintendo tonight. Quest for Pixels, 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you're listening to this on Monday, that show continues to rock on. And of course, the Xbox Drive, where I talk to Dave Moore while I drive to work. We talk about extra Xbox. If you haven't already, uh, and you'd like to, maybe take a moment. Support us on patreon.com slash make us better. It's more than just this show. It's Mr. Babbit. It's Warp Whistle Gaming. It's Nintendo Nostalgia. There's a whole bunch of us. You guys are amazing. Letting us live our dreams. I think that's pretty much pretty much all I wanna I wanna say. This song continues to go. I better better say thank you. To our artists, Adam Leonard, Gary Gray, our video designer, Antonio Guillen, and Dave Moore for the Day Space Network Podcast. Otherwise, this is episode 140 of We The Gamer Cast. It's now in your ears, and it's in your eyeballs. I'm going to be back next week. I hope you're there, too. Now it's time for my friend and your friend and S X for Jason. X press X for Jason. And sometimes Sean and Jason. And the arms go up and down. Jason! 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 Sean! 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 Sean, where are you? Jason! 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 Sean! 
Sean! Sean! Sean! Sean! Jason! 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 Jason!